everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja, and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your adrenal fix. Today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and MTHFR. I've had so many people come to me and ask me, hey doc, I'm MTHFR, what do I do now? And how does that relate to my adrenal fatigue? So what I'm doing is I'm standing in front of a pathway planner. I know you can't see it very well, but I just want you to get the just, the idea of what we're going to be talking about. And so we're right in front of my methylation pathway. And basically in English, methylation means the act of adding a methyl group onto the foods that you eat. So when we eat carbohydrates and proteins and fats, the biochemical reaction of breaking these things down are all basically these carbons with nitrogen and hydrogen and sulfur, depending on what type of protein, carbohydrate, or fatty acid it is. And enzymes, basically, they break down these foods and speed up reactions and help add a methyl group. So the whole trick about methylation is adding a methyl group. When we add a methyl group to the foods that we eat, what happens is that, that we break down, ultimately it changes the function or activates the function or allows us to produce energy. And the whole trick of the body is to produce energy so the cells can function and do the things that they need to do. So what do they need to do? They need to regenerate. They need to repair. They need to create neurochemicals, neurotransmitters, hormones. They need to be able to break down hormones. They need to be able to make uh, immune cells. So they need to be able to fight off infections. They need to fight off free radicals, so oxidative stress and environmental toxicities. And they need to do all these things. And if we're not controlling these stressors and able to have cells to manufacture energy, then from a macroscopic level, you're going to be tired all the time. You're not going to be able to focus, you're going to have brain fog, your joints are going to be sore, you're going to be depressed, you're going to be cold, you're going to have lack of energy, you may not be sleeping very well, you may not get up very well, so your circadian rhythms may be off, and it all pretty much starts with, with this methylation cycle. And what I want to tell patients also is just don't think of it as, hey doc, I got this gene that is altered in its efficiency, what supplements should I take, what should we do, because it comes down to the stressors that spin spin these wheels. And so what I explained to you is it's kind of like a, um, a, a watch on a gear. And if one watch or one sort of gear is broken, then it's going to impact this gear way over here or this gear way over here. So we need to find out where the gears are broken. But how does stress relate to all this? The way stress relates to all this is it causes these gears to go way, way quicker. So it's going to expose the weaknesses. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you about the IDO enzyme, which you've never, ever heard about I'm guessing and you should have because it has to do with your stress so the way we look at it is this is folate so sorry folic folic acid so folic acid is at the top of the pyramid and basically it's a manufactured man-made supplement or B vitamin that our body doesn't recognize or do a great job of breaking down into folate and basically folate is the methylated version, which we just finished talking about, of folic acid. So all of these enzymes, they have to work very, very hard to break down folic into folate and put a CH3 group. So the first lesson I always tell my patients is look at your foods that are fortified or enriched or processed and have folic acid in it. And you want to remove those and you want to add in folate, which is the methylated version. So you don't necessarily have to go to the grocery store uh, for the supplements to buy folate, but you could go to the produce section and get uncooked leafy green vegetables. Uncooked leafy green vegetables are going to provide a lot of folate and no matter what kind of methylation problems or genetic weak links you have, if it's MTHFR, then you're bypassing that whole problem by eliminating folic and getting folate into your diet. But where this comes into, into play with stress is when we have stress, physical stress, emotional stress, chemical stress, environmental stress, all of these stressors, it's going to speed up this pathway. It's called the chiurinin pathway. And when that chiurinin pathway is sped up, it's going to deplete your body of tryptophan. And when it, it, when it depletes your body of tryptophan, then tryptophan is necessary for, 
5-HTP, which is necessary for, for calming and sleeping. So there's a relationship there when someone is stressed out, they're not sleeping very well. It has a lot to do with this pathway. But one of the things I want to let you know is that we look at things that inhibit the gene, slow a gene down, things that are required for the gene like cofactors that allow it to work, and then we look at things that enhance the gene, that make it work quicker. And this stress, lipopolysaccharides, which is unhealthy bacteria in your gut, uh, maybe an H. pylori infection or mycoplasm or parasites or viruses, all of these stressors are going to create a lot of immune reactions. Um, also, um, uh, just TNF-alpha, which is a, a cytokine that we get when we have an infection, that's going to speed this up. And when that speeds this up, you're going to be burning through that enzyme so quickly that you are not going to be able to make neurotransmitters effectively. So um, just wanted to explain that to you. And, and so what we typically recommend is let's do a gut repair protocol so that we reduce the things that enhance the gene. Let's try to do some breathing activity so we relax. Let's try to get you out of a sympathetic state so that we're not speeding up this IDO enzyme and causing us to burn through all our neurotransmitters. We also want to know how well you're breaking down folic acid into folate. That's where we look at the MTHFR gene. Um, one of the cofactors for MTHFR is FAD, which is called activated riboflavin. If you have an underactive thyroid, then you're not going to activate riboflavin effectively. And now you have an MTHFR SNP or weakness coupled with the fact that you have an underactive thyroid and you're not producing enough folate to allow this whole cycle to spin properly. So I'm imagining your head is spinning right now, but what I want to let you know is that you're not crazy, that there are things that you can do besides just looking at your blood tests or cortisol blood draw in the morning that says that you're normal and your doctor says that you're crazy, that nothing's wrong with you, that there is a genetic component and the epigenetic component, the things that are impacting the genes. And unless you actually start to do fundamental work like cleaning up the gut, reducing your stress, stabilizing your blood sugar, controlling your total carbohydrates, making sure you're getting enough dietary fat, making sure you're getting multi-minerals, looking at your cell function, helping your mitochondrial function, trying to slow down your chiurinin pathway, and do a 23andMe to understand where all the genetics take place. So hopefully you enjoyed this level, this um, edition of your adrenal fix. Watch it over and over and over again and find a doctor that's going to work with you in this capacity. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I hope you enjoyed this edition of your adrenal fix. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, a share, a like, a comment, and be sure to check out my blog at adrenalfatiguesociety.com. Looking forward to helping you recover with your adrenal nightmare. Thank you so much.